What's up guys, TechNab here, and in today's videos we're going to go all the way back to 2011 and take a look at the AMD Radeon HD6770. This is the card we'll be looking at today and it was recently donated by one of our followers to the channel. So let's take a look at it. So back when AMD had weird naming conventions for everything, they released cards such as this, the AMD Radeon HD6770. It was a mid-range card that was released by AMD in 2011, and at the time it would have cost you around £120. The model we have here today is from Sapphire, and aside from its retro styling, it boasts a 40 nanometer process size, a core clock speed of 850 MHz, and 1GB of GDDR5 VRAM. No driver support for these is very limited now because AMD moved their drivers to their legacy mode and they only have support for DirectX 11, which will actually limit the amount of games that you can play with it, particularly with the more modern games that are coming out. Now, of course, you could pick these up super cheap from the secondhand market, but of course, we wanted to see how well we could game on it today. To do that, we decided to load it up onto our test bench and put it against some of our usual games. So let's roll those benchmarks. Okay, before we show those benchmarks, we have to add a little note. Not all of the games that we usually test would actually work on this card. In particular, Doom Eternal, we just constantly got an API error, which is more than expected, consider this only sports with DirectX 11. And we also had issues with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which would actually start and play, but then we would get a blank screen, so we couldn't actually see anything. Now, of course, these are mostly driver related issues, but we didn't want to go too much into it because we knew that this card isn't going to perform that well with those titles, particularly when they are some of the newest in our list. So instead, we swapped them out for their older alternatives to give the card a bit more of a fairer chance. It is worth noting some of these issues if you're going to pick one of these cards up, but now that we've got it out of the way, let's get back to those benchmarks. So as you can see from those benchmarks, it didn't fare too well. This wasn't a surprise to us considering the age of the card and how demanding some of those games can be. The target testing we did was actually to push this card to its limits to show you how much it could actually do. But it doesn't really do the card justice, so instead we decided to try and play all the same games again and try to find the best settings. 
Now Doom was one of the worst performing games of our target testing, with a low average FPS of just 13. It was completely unplayable, but after a few changes within the configuration we managed to pull it up a little bit. Sticking to a 1080p, we changed the quality settings to low, reduced the render scale to 50% and enabled vSync, and we managed to increase the FPS a lot. The game didn't look that bad, and with a new average FPS of around 31, it was just about playable. GTA was one of the best performing games of all of our testing, and considering its age and constant optimizations, it wasn't really a surprise. In our target testing, the HD 6770 managed to maintain an average of 31 frames per second, which meant it looked good and was playable, but of course we wanted to see what settings would be best. We found that simply lowering the graphics quality to normal, we could achieve quite a bit more performance with little loss in picture quality. Now averaging around 46 frames per second with pretty decent 1% lows meant the game became more than playable even in the most built up areas. Next up was Stray. Now Stray was one of the most demanding and newest games, and in our testing you could tell. Pulling in a low average of just 13 frames per second, Stray was completely unplayable and when attempting to find the best settings we really struggled. We found maintaining a 1080p resolution and lowering the graphics quality did very little, but on top of that, reducing the render scale to 50% at the same time did actually help. Now averaging around 31 frames per second, we could actually play the game, but it really deserves better, especially as the poor 1% lows meant you were dealing with a lot of stutter, which took away from the game. When it came to Tomb Raider, we found it was reasonably playable at any setting. This game is well optimised and pretty much does run on anything, even with our target testing only receiving around an average of 37 frames per second. The shining star with this game came from its incredible 1% lows, which meant it was always very smooth, which continued through into our best settings testing. We found that lowering the graphics quality to low and enabling VSync was all it needed to get an average of 60 frames per second, and even with the low settings, the game still looked great. Tomb Raider would definitely be a game you could play and enjoy on the HD 6770. The Witcher 3 though is where the card really fell flat. In our target testing it was completely unplayable with an average of only 8 frames per second and no matter what we changed it didn't really seem to help. Lowering all of the graphical settings we managed to squeeze only 20 frames per second out of it and even then it was not stable so unfortunately this is one game you won't get away with. Now based on those best settings tests, we can actually clearly see that there is a little bit of performance in this card, but it's probably too late for it now, particularly when it comes to those newer titles. I'm actually quite impressed with how the card performed and particularly some of the, its actual features. Aesthetically, it looks pretty cool. It runs super quiet, even though it's just a single fan version and the temps were perfectly fine all the way through. This card would actually make a great retro or gaming console kind of card and it would probably run really, really well with something like SteamOS, particularly because you tend to find there's a lot more support in Linux drivers for much older AMD cards like this. For us, we're not sure what we're going to do with it yet. We may look to see if there's a retro system that we can build at some point, or we might just actually use it as a bit of a decoration around the studio. But apart from that, it brings us to our end of the revisits to the AMD Radeon HD 6770. Let us know in the comments below what you think, and do you have one of these cards lying around that you could use? Or if you had one back in the day, tell us your experience on it back then. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. Also drop us a like so we know to do more and we'll catch you in the next one.